when you're in year seven, you get to go to the Kawinda village. You go on the bus. Well, we get off the bus and we go and sit next to one of the older people. Sometimes they tell us about like how they like singing and what they're, and sometimes about their schooling. You get to know most of the residents pretty well. If you sit next to the same person a couple of weeks in a row, you get to know them. And we wanted to foster relationships outside of the school with the community. And Catherine thought about Coinda and they thought, why don't we have a joint choir? Music brings people together. The project started uh, five years ago and it's essentially a wellbeing project. The music is a vehicle to make those connections happen. They just thought it was the most wonderful idea. So here we are five years later still doing it. We worked with Catherine on this project and that was around the benefits of singing and socially bringing younger people and older people together. The residents are really nice, they're always up to have a conversation with you. They're really happy, they love singing, they love seeing all us. Yesterday I was with one person and she was telling me all about her grandchildren and how she used to live on the farm and all that stuff, it was pretty cool. A normal choir, you would just be with your age group, okay? But here, we have Year 7s singing with the elderly, and it's wonderful. I don't think the students have that opportunity to sing with others, with the elderly. Some do not have grandparents, and all of a sudden, they've got a new grandparent, and the elderly that sometimes do not have a family, now have a grandson or a granddaughter. We prepare them basically by explaining to the students that although the resident might be in a wheelchair or perhaps they may not talk a lot, that in fact they're exactly the same as everyone else. They're just, um, you know, perhaps they can't walk, but in fact they're the same people, they're just a little bit older. And I find that the first week the students are a little bit tentative. Um, by the second week, they bowl into Coinda Village like it's their home and they feel very comfortable and um, they actively seek out the person they were sitting next to and they almost adopt them. Well, I, I understand that a number of kids aren't blessed with grandparents. You know, somehow or other they just don't seem to have them. And so perhaps, perhaps we are surrogate grandparents to them. I know that they, uh, they love to see the kids and they enjoy the company of the children each week. We get there and then we sit down next to an elderly person. We introduced ourselves to the residents there and they introduced them, we had a chat. We like talk a bit and then we start doing some warm-ups. You learn a new song, either that just a warm-up one or one that you'll be doing in the concert. At the beginning, the students are so nervous. They don't know what to say to the elderly that they are partnered with, but look at over the weeks, a great friendship develops. And as the students walk in, you know, they go right to the person and they start talking up what happened during the week. And you can really see the elderly person's eyes light up. The young people to meet and, and begin to understand older people and for older people to understand the, the lovely young people that come with this program. I think group singing is particularly effective because even if you have people who are not so gifted, when you put a whole group together, then you can create a lovely sound, whereas um, individually you might not be so good. And I think it gives people confidence. I'm enjoying it greatly. And I plan to be outrageously sharp during the concert. Because I know it'll be family and friends and there'll be no one expecting to be blown out of their minds by the brilliance of the choir. I'd never sung in my life before. And uh, so I said, oh, I'll have a go. And they're very, they were all very kind and easy to get on with. So uh, you had a couple, you had one each side of you to sing if you were getting stuck. A couple of months ago, 
was announced that the SCJ Choir and the going to choir were going to start practicing again. I love singing, even if I haven't got a voice. And um, so I joined. Once a week, the kids are asked to go out uh, to Coinda Village and um, they learn a number of songs. Some people do solos, which is really very exciting, particularly for the older people. Uh, last week, I was next to um, a man there and he got a solo and he said he's been practicing ever since he got it. I got to sing uh, Oh Danny Boy. Uh, I'm looking forward to it now. I've been practicing it, <laughs> get into bed at night and practice it. And... Yeah, I think most of the people probably prefer the older songs as they know them. But I think it'd be good for them to learn some modern songs. It's much better than just a school choir because you actually get to know new people every day. It's not like just the same thing. Mrs Burton teaches most of the songs and a couple of warm-up songs. At the end of the program we have a concert at BPAC. Performance at the end, you, f you will feel nervous that once you, you, once you do it, you'll probably feel a lot better. And by the end of the eight weeks, um, they're really sad to finish it, I think. I'm sorry to see it finished after the concert, that's it. It's really quite sad. I know that there are a number of people who would enjoy it because they've told me so. They're not going to go to it because they haven't got a good voice. My word, if they let that stop them, they'll stop living. For mum and dad, this will be the fourth, possibly the fifth time that they've gone and they never miss it, they love it. Um, and um, mum hasn't yet been to one where she hasn't cried, which is a good testament to how moving it is for her. Say a little prayer for you.